I recently released a video entitled, Would Some Government Jobs Exist in a Free Market? And in that video, I, I, I kind of talked about um, how some jobs that the government currently does or some things that it does or purports to do um, could also be done in a free market environment. Like there would still be someone who would build roads without the government. And the video was directed toward voluntarists who have, you know, read a bunch of books on the subject and are really into voluntarism and understand basic philosophy. However, I received a comment on the video and the guy, uh, it was, username has dude in it. So I'm assuming it's a guy. Uh, sorry if I misgendered you. Um, but but the, the person actually, there was some snarky stuff in, in his comment. But overall, uh, the guy was thinking and he took the time and effort to write a, a comment that brought up some good points. And so I thought, hey, um, why don't I address those in a video? And this is that video. So uh, his, his general uh, idea uh, and I'll read a bit of what he says and then respond to it, read a bit more and respond to it and so on. He says, I have a feeling we have very different ideas about what's in the general public interest, but I think there, there are a lot of jobs that have to exist in the government because they simply would not and could not exist in the private sector. And so he's going to go on and give an example, but for now, and I love that he starts the next sentence with, I have a feeling you disagree with that, but, and then he, he continues chatting. Um, I appreciate this feeling uh, or this, this way that he is communicating. Um, he's saying, hey, I, I think we disagree here, but here's my perspective. And he obviously listened to mine. So for those of you who are, uh, who are ever listening to videos and you, you want to make a response, please do so kind of in the tone that this guy is using so far. Um, you know, it's, Two dudes sitting there having a good argument, and hopefully other people can benefit from it as well and come up with some good counterpoints for both of us. So could, would not and could not exist in the private sector. Well, I think that anything that needs to be done would exist in the private sector. It would, it would what he calls the private sector. Uh, it would exist in a free market. Um, now, not every job that a government person does would even exist. Um, and that was kind of the point of my video. But everything that needs to be done, I think, would be able to be handled by a uh, some entrepreneur would start up something to to satisfy the needs and the wants of uh, people who are willing to exchange their uh, money or whatever barter uh, for what this person provided. So I, I disagree with that. And before I get into it, I, I'm I'm talking about a pragmatic thing, aren't I? So basically, there's this question that, that this gentleman and I are discussing. The question is, um, are there jobs or that that would be that would still exist if there was no government? Um, I mean, could a stateless society handle everything that needs to be done? And that's a very pragmatic question. And the reason I bring this up is that I, I rarely delve into the pragmatic part of things because that's more of an engineer's job, a social engineer uh, that would that would be the person uh, who would try to come up with all of these solutions for any social issue. <clears throat> I don't claim to be able to solve complex problems, and I, I frankly think no human being can. So I don't delve into that that much. Um, what I am into is moral philosophy. <clears throat> so, for example, if I say um, I think it's wrong to punch little babies in the face and then somebody says, well, yeah, but how would people get their frustration out if they couldn't punch little babies in the face? And they are asking a pragmatic question. And mine is a moral statement. I think it's wrong to do that. So whether or not I can come up with ways for people to relieve frustration other than punching babies in the face that has nothing to do with my moral philosophy argument, which is, uh, I think it's wrong to do that. So I'm, I'm delving out, or I'm moving out of this area that I usually uh, stay within, which is moral philosophy, and I'm going to get into the pragmatic part, and I don't claim to have all the right answers, uh, but this gentleman is kind of suggesting that we play a little what if, let's predict the future, let's predict what we think might happen, possible outcomes. And so I will play along with that and go along with that uh, because I think that the, the the group of people who I frequently hang out with online and 
and in person. We're used to arguing moral philosophy, but that's not of interest to everyone. So this will be a little bit more for the person who isn't interested in, in moral philosophy. So he says, I have a feeling you disagree with that, but let's use your pseudo game warden example and follow it through with what I think your brand of freedom and free market entails beyond the point you took it to. And so he's he's very good. He's being honest what he thinks my my brand of freedom and free market. Um, and just to clarify that, it's, I, I don't believe a state should exist from a moral perspective. So it would be absolute free market, um, not a, a controlled market with very little control, like Milton Friedman would have wanted, but an absolute free market. Everything is, everybody's completely free. Everything is uh, complete freedom in the world. Um, so yes, that is my brand. Uh, so his scenario goes, his predictions, if King Ranch in Texas hired someone to stop poaching, um, I had given the example of game wardens. A game warden would exist in a free market uh, environment because maybe King Ranch in Texas, huge ranch, they probably have hired people to protect the game animals from poachers and such. So yeah, I think that kind of job would exist if government went away. So it is a legitimate job, just an illegitimate employer was my opinion. So he says, if King Ranch in Texas hired someone to stop poaching, but I still wanted to poach and had the resources and no morals or simply different morals than that what is generally accepted, accepted, could I simply not just hire someone to eliminate that person? King Ranch doesn't like this, so they hire a group of people to stop that from happening, and we follow that back and forth until someone runs out of resources, and thus the other person gets to do whatever they want. Let's even go a step further. Now King Ranch is unable to hire people to stop what they feel are incursions on their property. Could I not just come by, come in with my hired men and take it from them? Who would stop me in this case? And why would they do it? Why would they stop him? And then he says, and what would stop this from happening over and over until eventually you live in a broken kingdom ruled by a totalitarian dictator? That's... Uh... That's something that could happen, I guess, the the predictions and the the one thing that follows the other that this gentleman says that that could happen. Um, but I, I'm going to kind of go along and say you and I'm not saying hey, this is a what if, but do you know any people in your day to day life or who you've come across who would want to hunt on a particular piece of land, go shoot a deer and they want to shoot a deer so badly that they would risk ticking off a powerful branch like King Ranch? Do you know anybody who would do it morally, who would say, you know, I really want to go kill a deer, I want to go hunting, and I don't want to ask for permission, or I did ask and King Ranch said no, so therefore um, I'm going to go and kill the game warden uh, on that ranch so that I can hunt there. I, I mean, I suppose that could happen. Um, I, I don't think that's likely. Now, I do think people would try to sneak on. Um, and then if they were caught by the game warden, they might try to fight their way away and, and shoot the game warden. Um, thus, I'm guessing a game warden would be armed and, and know something about tactics and, and how to how to fight and how to not be taken out in a, in a gunfight. So yeah, that that could happen that 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 would ha happen what this person's suggesting um and then king ranch would hire more people more game wardens um to stop that yeah i i think that would happen um i know if i had a huge ranch and and you know some money to run it like king ranch does um if somebody came in and shot the game warden and went hunting then i would say wow this is a uh, this is bad. We better get more technology, more people, better training, uh, whatever, um, so that I can protect my property. And yeah, I think I would hire more people um, and then they would protect the property. Uh, now, whoever killed the game warden, um, if we didn't know who that was, I imagine that there we would want to find out who it is. We would want to make sure that that person was punished somehow um, and that they weren't going to come back and do it again. So I imagine we would hire someone. There are a bunch of ideas, hundreds, thousands of hours of more than that, of ideas about how dispute resolution organizations might 
work. Um, and, you know, for a, just that one topic, there are probably hundreds or thousands of different ideas on how they might work. And then there are other ideas of how societies might organize um, without a, a central uh, ruling class that does so without the permission of, well, I guess it wouldn't be a ruling class if they had permission, they'd be a leading class. Um, but yeah, there are lots of ideas out there on how this might work, but I don't know. Um, I just don't know how that would, would work out. I, I imagine up to this point, yeah, King Ranch would hire an investigator to figure out what happened uh, or who it was that killed their game warden. Um, that would certainly, if they took that very seriously, that would encourage other people to want to be game wardens because they say, hey, you know, if I get hurt on the job or killed, the boss is going to take care of me and and find out what happened and, you know, get retribution, um, retaliate somehow, uh, make things right, as right as they can be. Maybe get that person and uh, sue them if there was a some sort of a court system, not a government court system, but some sort of arbitration or um, all the things that could happen within a DRO. Um, yeah, I imagine that something like that would happen. Meanwhile, the ranch, my ranch is hiring more, uh, more people, more game wardens. And so, yeah, now we have teams of two that, that do their patrols. Um, and let's see, so we go a step further. Uh, let's see, now King Ranch is unable to hire. Oh, so until we run out of resources before that. So the assumption would be that nobody wants to be a game warden because they all keep getting killed. Um, that is, if the, the poachers win, uh, if the game wardens win, if the landowners are able to protect their property, then I guess you'd run out of poachers. They'd all get, get killed or, or driven away. Um, and then another scenario would be, well, what if King Ranch is unable to hire people to stop what they feel are incursions on their property? Um, could you not just come in with your hired men and take it from them? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just like today, you could go to a ranch and take over. Um, now, the rancher doesn't want that to happen, and so would probably have something in place for protection. Um, uh, and again, there's a lot of work that's been done on possible ideas, but they're all just ideas. Um, and they're, you know, people come up with these ideas based on the current system, which we've proven doesn't work. And they say, well, we don't know if our ideas are going to work, but we know this one doesn't. It doesn't work well and isn't isn't one we like. And, and it goes against our morals to support it and such. So, so maybe we have other options. And so they, they have all these ideas that they put out there. And I don't know if any of those would work. Um, I, I don't. I, I think they would. But uh, there's no way I could predict the future like that. Nobody can. If somebody could predict all of these things, then that would be a good argument that there should be a central ruling authority. Uh, there should be a king, and, and whoever that person is, that should be the king. Um, that person should be the king. But there's nobody that can can solve these complex 50 steps ahead with 100 different offshoots problems. It's just it's not possible uh, to solve these uh, with humans. Now, there are some complex problems with mechanical things that that humans can solve but not things social they're just too 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 many options out there too many different people's subjective values and habits and biases and and it, it, it's not at this point um, and I don't think even with AI I think it's going to be a lot of 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 years if ever until uh, this could possibly be solved by AI, uh, some general AI thing. And I, I don't even see that happening. Maybe I'm naive. Um, so yeah, somebody can come in and steal somebody else's property. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the legal term for that is. I think it's eminent domain or something like that. Can a group of people come in and take somebody else's property? Yes. Um, so right now the system would be if a poacher came into the property and said to the rancher, hey, you don't have anybody to protect you. I've got an army of, you know, my, I'm a warlord. I've got my army of people here. You and your family need to get out of here or just kill the rancher. Um, but let's say that they're just saying, get off this property. It's now my property. Well, what is the rancher going to do? Um, I don't know. I, I think he's going to call his security company and they're going to come and get rid of the other folks. Um, that would be my assumption. Maybe the rancher would just give up and say, oh, okay, yeah, you've got, you know, eight guys there and it's just me and my family. We'll, we'll run away. We'll give up our whole 
kazillion acre ranch. I, I don't know, but I doubt he would do that. I think he would want a solution. I think he would think about this before the time had arrived and have some sort of a plan in mind. Um, you know, generally humans have come up with plans for protecting themselves and their property. So I imagine he would have come up with a plan. Um, and then what's what's to stop this from happening uh, all over? Uh, and it just happens over and over. And then finally, this person who maybe started out as a poacher, and I'm putting words in his mouth, but I think this is where he's going. Um, this person who started out as a poacher winds up taking over all the ranches and is now like running the country and he can tell everybody what to do. And of course, he's not going to do it himself. He's going to delegate it to a group of people, you know, maybe 500 people or whatever he'd have telling everybody what to do. And then a bunch of big, huge enforcement team making sure they do it. So then he's basically running the show, um, which is kind of, I guess, government. Um, so yeah, that a government could arise again. Um, that could definitely happen. Um, this, uh, this brand, talking about the, the brand that I prefer or I think would work best, this brand of free market allows whoever has the resources to do anything they want as long as they can pay people to do that job and outpay someone who doesn't want them to do it. We don't live in absolute freedom because it will inevitably lead to tyranny. Uh, we live in a society and agreeing to be part of that society means compromising your freedoms for the greater good. Interesting. So this is a this is a, a projection. This is an assertion. We don't live in absolute freedom because it will inevitably lead to tyranny. But I could also say that things are kind of tyrannical now, or governments always lead to tyranny. I could also say that if a bunch of people have brown hair, tyranny will happen, or if they keep making really crappy light beer that tyranny will happen. Um, I can make these assertions, but there's nothing to nothing to back it up. <clears throat> um, and I'm sure that there have been times where there's been an absence of a uh, powerful government. And then there's, there have been arguments and fights and mayhem. I'm sure that's happened. There's usually that happens until another government takes over. Um, so yeah, that's, I think historically that happens a lot. Um, we, but here's the sentence that's really, this is a, this is a big topic. This is probably why the video is not going to be, you know, five or 10 minutes long, a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more. Um, we live in a society and agreeing to be part of that society means compromising your freedoms for the greater good. Um, I, when he says we, I assume that he means he, and, and I live in a, a society. I think we might have different understandings of the word society, um, but we live in a, a social atmosphere. Uh, we live in a geographical area. There, there are a lot of ways of thinking what a society could be. We live in a group of people, a group of individuals, um, and we agree to be part of that society. By agreeing, that means that we're compromising or we need to compromise. Um, I, I don't think that follows. Uh, that people have made that assertion that if you choose to live in the vicinity of other people, then you don't get to do what you want. You have to kind of compromise. Um, that's just kind of an assertion that I don't think holds water. I, I think that's incorrect from a moral philosophy standpoint, a lay, a lay philosopher. I'm by no means an expert at this, but no, I, I don't think his point here is is sound. Um, and by agreeing to be part of a site, what do you mean being part of it? Uh, I have people using force against me to do some parts of society, like when I have money extorted from me every April 15th, when I have 6% extorted at the cash register, register when I buy something. So there are a lot of things called taxes that that the money that I have worked hard for and earned is taken away from me by some people. And then those people spend a portion of that to do things that they say are good for me and that it's part of living in this society with roads and such. So if we're going to have roads, we've got to have a way to fund them and people aren't going to donate enough. So we have to steal the money from her take the money from people against their will. 
which that's the definition of stealing. Um, that's just the definition of it. So they say stealing is acceptable because it's not really stealing because we think it's important. Uh, and because there's some people who you really don't control, but they're your representatives. And it, it, it looking into this, I mean, I used to believe all this. I was completely on this, this dude's side. Like I completely agreed with him that you've got to have rules. You've got to compromise. Yeah. Well, you can't just do whatever you want. And, uh, but then when I think about it more deeply, no, I, I think from a moral standpoint, yeah, it is okay for you to do whatever you want. Um, I mean, it, it might not be okay to do a particular thing, but we shouldn't stop others from living peaceful, good lives, just kind of minding their own business. They don't need to be a part of the society. They could step out of it. My neighbor doesn't have to associate with me, doesn't have to associate with anyone else. Don't have to chip in for the road. They don't have to do anything if they don't want to. Um yeah, I don't I don't think that's a I don't think being a part of a society as I think this gentleman understands it. I don't think that's a good or necessary thing. Um, and then it, it brings up an excellent point here. Now, who who gets to decide what the greater good is and why is a very uh, and why uh, who gets to decide what the greater good is and why is a very different discussion. Uh, but in any case, those compromises and giving up some of those freedoms needs to be protected and managed, and that cannot be done by a simple, pure, free market. Um, that's an, another assertion. Um, and greater good, I'm not sure I understand the definition of greater good. Um, it, that that would need to be defined. And I, I think I know what you mean, but I'm, I'm kind of forcing this, I'm forcing us to really think about this term greater good. Um, so if if we think it's good for a woman not to be raped, how could it be a greater good for her to be raped? And I don't understand how that could be. Or if, if we think that taking things from other people um, against their will is stealing and it's wrong and it's it's not good, then if somebody finds a way to do it, how, how can that be called a greater good? Uh, how is it greater to violate the minority's rights or the majority's rights? I don't think rights exist, but I'm, I'm using them uh, casually in this, in this sentence or in this thought. We can't just take away a person's right not to be raped because it's good, that there's a, some greater good. Like, like, what's the definition of greater good? Better for society? Um, well, what if society is comprised of, you know, thinking about that horrible idea of democracy, what if society is comprised of a particular society of nine guys and one gal, and the nine guys all vote that they're going to take turns raping her? Um, so democracy would say, hey, she gets raped. Sorry, lady. Uh, you've got to compromise your freedom, your right not to get raped for the greater good, the greater group good of the group. And that's certainly that kind of a, uh, I don't know, altruistic, communist, collectivist, socialist mindset. A lot of people have that um, where they don't think that the individual's rights are, are number one, but I, I don't subscribe to that. So I, I couldn't really speak to that. Um, and then the rest of that sentence is just an assertion that we have to give up freedoms and we have to compromise uh, and that somebody has to manage all of this and this couldn't happen in a, in a free market environment. And I completely will hand it to you if you have in fact read a dozen or so books with various ideas of how it could work. Um, and after reading those and, and considering the pragmatic part, considering the moral philosophy part, um, if you've read a couple dozen books on this that are, are kind of in, the, in disagreement with what your current worldview is um, and you still don't see it, then that's a, that's a pretty good dive into doing some research. And uh, yeah, you might be right. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't work. Um, I, I mean, I know it's work happening right now isn't working. So whether or not some other people's ideas would work or not, I don't know. Um, yeah, if we did have absolute freedom, would that 
quote unquote work. Um, I don't think world would be perfect. I don't think it would be this. There's this whole utopian thing that some people think uh, that you know the government can run things and it's going to be utopia. No, it's not. It's just like if there was absolute freedom, they're going to be jerks. They're going to be poachers. They're going to be people who try to rule the world. There are going to be all kinds of nasty people out there who continue doing stuff. Fortunately, there's a tiny percentage, a very tiny percentage. And I think that all the rest of us who are basically good folk, I think we would come together and find ways to make it not happen. Um, and I don't think that would need to be centrally organized by a government. Yeah. And the gentleman who wrote these comments is tossing out his projections for the future. And that's kind of my projection is I, I don't think so. I, I disagree. And we don't really have any proof. Like, I don't think either of us could say, here is a society that in time, everyone in the society became educated into the ideals of, of free market libertarian uh, living, and everybody understands moral philosophy and understands that the idea of having a ruler is messed up and, and that that shouldn't happen. Um, we, we've never, I, I've never read anything about that ever happening in society. I don't, I don't, I think there's always been some band of hood or government that's come in and they've started trying to run people's lives, you know, at least in the last hundreds of years. That's just kind of what always seems to happen. Um, Maybe for all of humanity, I don't know. But I can't point to a time in civilization where there was a well-educated group of people, the whole society, the whole group of people was, were well-educated, uh, was well-educated. Uh, that, that was that's funny right there. Uh, but the, where the whole group were uh, well-educated folks. And uh, I don't think that's ever happened. Um, yeah, kind of like, you know, before the airplane was invented, nobody had ever flown in an airplane before the computer was invented. Nobody had ever used a computer. But then people had an idea and said, hey, maybe there's a better way of doing things than this lousy way we've been doing things. Maybe we can crunch numbers in a different way. Maybe instead of having a piece of paper and a pencil, maybe we can build this machine that can do it. And I'm sure there are people, well, that would never work. You're never going to be able to add numbers without a pencil and a piece of paper. And then people said, I don't know, maybe you're right, but let me give it a try. Let's see what we can come up with. And some of the people just said, you know, I think there is a better way. And they didn't have the engineering knowledge to make it happen. And that's kind of where I stand is I don't have the engineering knowledge to, to know what all societies are going to do. Nobody does, actually. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how it would all happen. But I, I, I predict that things would be better than they are now uh, in time. There'd probably be a, a period of nastiness if all government disappeared this moment. But... I think in, in some time, things would be much better. And I could be wrong. Okay, and then uh, he touches on something else here. Uh, quote, uh, also, I am not going to touch your stance that anyone who gets paid by the government gets paid in stolen money because I can't even begin to wrap my head around that. Uh, close quote. Amen. I was there too. That's exactly what I believed for many years. I was a police officer. I got paid for about 10 years of my life with tax dollars, uh, with money from the government. And so, yeah, I, I was right there with you. I, uh, yeah, I, amen, amen, amen. Um, then for the last maybe 15 years, I just read book after book after book and listened to all these lectures and, and have all these, ideas and i'm thinking you know um i was wrong before um so here's how i wrapped my head around it is and i could still be wrong but i just looked at you know what is the thing if we take away fancy words or if we use different words to describe something so and i'm just going to use income tax as an example um because a lot of the money that the government has that they then pay to government employees comes from taxes and there are other other ways, but I'm just going to touch on that part. So taxes, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, taxes are when some people, the government, go to other people and demand that those people give them some money. It's not robbery because they don't go and demand it under force or fear uh, at that point. It's not like they put a gun to somebody's head and say, give me your money. 
So it's not robbery. What it is is extortion. So this group of people says, hey, Shepard, give me 38% of everything you earn. Um, all the money that comes into your household, give me 38% of it. And I say, oh, no, thank you. Um, but no, I don't want to do that. And I say, no, 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 we're not asking. We are telling you that you need to do that. If you don't, we're going to do some really nasty things. We're going to start sending letters. And then after that, we're going to start putting liens on your property. And then we'll have the sheriff come and take your property. And But basically stealing, aggressing against me, against aggressing against my property. If I defend my property, like I would when anybody else would come and try to take it away from me, um, then I would, you know, turn into a gunfight. And likely if I took it all that way to that, if I said, I am absolutely defending my property, then the government would shoot me and kill me. So when they come to me with a very nice letter saying, hey, don't forget to pay your taxes this year, and they get a big smile on their face, what they're really saying is, and if you don't, we're going to take this all the way to the end until we kill you. So that's what makes it extortion, and extortion is a type of theft. Now, I don't see how that's debatable. I do see how somebody could say, hey, I really, really, really want that tax money to be spent on things that are important to me. So Republicans might say, I want it to be spent on military and law enforcement, and we need a strong military, um, and we, we need lots of rules, and we need them strictly enforced, and that's what will make society good, and so we want the money for that. So it's okay to steal money in order to pay for that. And then Democrat might say, well, we think that everybody should have a house to live in and a job or they didn't even have to have a job. Everybody should have a house to live in, plenty of food, um, a vehicle, uh, a phone, um, health care. Like they should have all of these free things provided for them. And so therefore, since they really want those things, we have to steal from people. And we have to have this thing we call taxes. Taxes is a much softer word, isn't it? Well, so these two groups of people are completely all over it. Like they're all over taking $38 out of every $100 that I earn. They're all about taking it and then fighting over whether they're going to spend it on the military and law enforcement or whether they're going to spend it on stuff that they give to people who have not gone out and earned the money or that amount of money. But it's theft. How is it not theft? Maybe you say it's okay for that theft to take place. And maybe you're right. I don't think you are. But I don't see how we can not call that theft. I mean, look up the definition of the word theft. Uh, it, it is when you take, lead, or carry something away from somebody else uh, with the intent to permanently deprive them thereof. And that's what happens. Now, governments will write in their books, in their law books, they will write anybody who illegally takes, leads, or carries away the property of another with the intent to permanently deprive them. Uh, which That's just basically, like, if my name was Eric, then I could write something that says, well, anybody who, uh, without Eric's permission, takes, leads, or carries the property of another with the intent to permanently deprive them thereof, uh, well, you can't just all of a sudden come into some moral idea, ideal, like, theft, that word, you can't just come in and change it and say, well, it doesn't really apply because we say we have an exception. Like from a logical sense, uh, if you're familiar with logical fallacies, that, that you can't do that. That's that's not part of the, the way that we think or we can communicate with each other. It's, it's against the rules of logic and reason. And then, of course, you could argue and say, hey, who says logic and reason are that important? And, and I do. I, I say they are. And you don't have to. You can disagree. Um, that's okay. I'm not going to force you to believe in logic and reason. It's just how I choose to live my life. It's how I choose to think and communicate. So, yeah, that's my choice. Um, yeah, so that's that's why I think that anybody who works for the government gets paid. Uh, so that's how I wrapped my head around it. Uh, and, again, I didn't in the beginning, but years later, that's, that's the conclusion I came to. Uh, if I've been unfair in any of this, if I – misunderstood you, uh, please let me know. Um, I, I tried to be pretty fair about it. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, write another comment below, and I'm not just speaking to the uh, 
uh, the person to whom I'm responding here who made the comment, I'm speaking to everybody. If you have a, a good argument against the things I'm saying, uh, you're probably right. I don't know how long this uh, video is. I haven't been watching, but uh, let me see if I can even figure it out here. No, I can't. Um, but I'm guessing it's, it's, you know, 40 minutes at least. Um, and in 40 minutes, I've got to have been wrong about, geez, at least three or four or five minutes worth of stuff. I'm not smart enough to be right about everything. So please uh, point it out. Let me know where I'm wrong. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Thanks for being curious about this kind of stuff. Um, I didn't make this video to get a lot of views. This is kind of for people who like to think. Uh, thanks for being a thinker.